Hi folks, have you ever wondered that we have seen fruit basket but have never seen a fruit in reality? I said fruit, not a type of fruit. Okay, let me put it this way. Can you imagine shape of a fruit without knowing what type of fruit? The fact is, a fruit does not exist physically, but a type of fruit does. Interesting, isn't it? Let us solve this mystery in this video. Identify objectionable act from these statements. Father asked to purchase a car. Jack purchased sports car. Grandfather asked to purchase a vehicle. John purchased a sports car. Customer asked for a special bail. Waiter served a bail. Now here, the sports car is a car and car is a vehicle. So we can say sports car is a vehicle. So, sports car is a car is correct statement and sports car is a vehicle is also a correct statement. On similar lines, every special bail is a type of bail. However, every bail may not be a special bail. Note that the relationship between these type of two entities is called is a relationship. And the symbols which we are using in this example between the two entities is a standard notation in graphical modeling language known as unified modeling language or UML in short. UML helps the designer to model the code in graphical way. This is independent of any programming language, so all types of programmers can use them. Let us see another example. Let's write a class that represents this cube. The initializer needs at least one parameter to set its property length. The class has a getter method that returns the volume of cube based on the set length. Now let us consider a big cubical box which has a capacity to accommodate small cubes inside. The capacity of the cube can be calculated by dividing big cube volume by small cube volume. Let us model this big cube in a python class. The initializer and get volume method will be same as cube class. However, it will have one additional method called get capacity. For capacity calculation, we need volume of small cube. So object reference of small cube is needed as input parameter for this method. Big cube knows its volume. The division formula may result in fraction. So let us convert that into int before returning the result. Let us analyze these classes. The get volume method and length are common to both the classes. Hence, second time declaration is redundant. Now, the big cube is a special type of cube, which means the easier relationship exists between these classes. In object-oriented paradigm, such specialized class is called child class or subclass and the generalized entity that is the entity from which the child class is derived is called parent class or superclass. Note that we are not declaring the existing members of cube class. This is because the child class can inherit the non-private members of parent class. Hence, this concept of object-oriented programming is called inheritance. Now let us see the code to understand syntax. There is no change for parent class. However, while declaring the child class, we need to mention about parent class. Now the members from parent class will be inherited, so no need to rewrite them. However, this time the initializer of parent class should be called explicitly to initialize its properties. We need to provide only additional method get capacity in the big cube class which was not there in the parent class. Now let us test the code. The first statement will create an object of cube in memory and reference is passed to variable small cube. On execution of print statement, the small cube volume gets printed. The next statement would create object of big cube in memory, passing the reference to the variable big cube. In next print statement, we are calling get volume method which does not exist in big cube instance. Then, where is it executing from? The fact is, an object of parent class is instantiated first in memory, even before instantiation of child class. One more interesting thing to know is that when we don't inherit any class, by default every class inherits object class, which means instance of object class will be created even before creation of instance of cube. Thus, Every object creation actually results in a creation of all ancestors and all of their members act as single instance. For example, 
When we call get capacity method, internally it invokes get method of associated parent class instance. This is how inheritance works in background. Now, while implementing inheritance in Java, the child class needs to use extends keyword to declare its parent class. The constructor of child gives call to parent class constructor by using super keyword. Let us test this implementation. A class called object is default super class of all the classes in Java when no super class is mentioned. So its instance is created always first. Thus, every child will have members from its parental hierarchy. Now let's try to list all the primary account types in a bank as class entity with properties and methods. We can easily spot that there are many common members among these classes. So let's create a generic entity called account which will have all common elements and let the child account types contain specific members required for those account types. In inheritance relationship, parents are more generalized and child classes are more specialized. Hence, the relationship is also known as generalization specialization relationship or simply generalization. What can you say about these pictures? This is a circle, this is a rectangle and this one is a square. What about their properties? Can you guess the generic term which can be used for these entities? shape isn't it every shape has a name and all the shapes can be drawn with this information let us create class diagram a circle is a type of shape rectangle is a type of shape a square is a type of shape now can you think about how to provide implementation for draw method in shape class we can't the reason is that shape in reality does not exist it is a generalized name given to the various types of shapes. We don't know how to draw a shape unless a concrete physical subclass like rectangle or circle or square is actually created. However, the draw method is a member of shape class because every shape can be drawn. Such a method whose declaration is known but body cannot be provided is called abstract method. And the class which contains at least one such abstract method and hence cannot be instantiated is called abstract class. When a child class method has same signature as that of parent class method but different body implementation, it is called method overriding. The members of parent class which are meant to be used by derived classes is declared as protected. In UML, it is denoted by hash. Now let us see how to write abstract class in Python. The shape should inherit ABC class. A decorator is then placed on the method to declare it as abstract. The child classes like circle and rectangle can inherit the abstract shape class like any other class. Note that the protected variable name in Python begins with single underscore. All the learners, please pay attention here. The two terms abstraction and abstract have different meanings. Abstraction is a design level thought process, whereas abstract is a keyword used in programming languages. The Java implementation of abstract method requires that there should not be any body for this method keyword abstract should be mentioned in the method declaration and the class should also be declared as abstract with abstract keyword. Let us test this code. A parent type of variable can hold reference to the child class object. Now when we invoke an overridden method on variable of parent class who actually contains reference to the child class then Always the child class implementation is invoked. Let us verify this by assigning instance of another child that is object of rectangle to the variable sh. This time the method call will invoke the implementation of rectangle class. Quest time. Please listen this carefully. 
A fruit basket is used to keep fruits. Jack left a message for Jill on a paper. Please bring me a fruit and keep it in fruit basket. However, Jill could not follow the order due to ambiguous request. In order to programmatically model this situation, four statements are written. Identify the statement that makes sense. You may make a reasonable assumption with reference to the real world. Please pause, answer and then proceed. Let us find the answer. In real world, we can call something as fruit which has a common properties of a fruit like seed, color, taste, etc. Further, we extract juice from them. They have a name. So, a fruit is a logical abstract entity. It does not exist, but its concrete subclasses like mango, orange, guava do exist. A fruit is a concept, so it is abstract class and we cannot have a real object of it. This is reason why Jill could not follow the instruction written by Jack. So, the option A is wrong since fruit cannot be instantiated directly. A fruit basket is neither a mango nor an orange, meaning there is no parent-child relationship between them. So, option B and C will actually result in error because only a variable of type superclass can hold the object of subclass. It makes sense from real world when we say fruit baskets are meant to hold object of fruit type and gawa is a fruit. So, option D is correct. Thank you for watching. Please leave your feedback comments.